What's up guys, Econ John here. Welcome back to our fourth part in our five part series on real business cycle theory. In this video, we're gonna solve a special case of the baseline model that we've been showing. Let's go. Our baseline real business cycle model as presented in the first part of this video series can't be solved analytically. This is because the model contains both linear and log linear parameters. Uh, we therefore proceed to analyze a much simpler version of the model where we can still analyze the impact of the real shocks to on business cycle fluctuations. Uh, the two changes that we're gonna make in this modified version are that we're gonna eliminate government from our analysis and we're gonna assume a 100% depreciation rate. This model, just like the regular version of the model where we don't have these two specification, is an example of a Walrasian economy, meaning that it's an economy which reaches an equilibrium where movements are done as a response to real shocks in the model. So our simplified real business cycle model is now defined as this list over here where we have equations one to nine. You know, most of them being the same like how we discussed in our previous videos, just that we omitted government. And the two different equations that we're having here is equation two and equation four. In equation two, we define our capital accumulation equation just as the, the money that's not spent on consumption. Right, that's going to be your capital in period t plus one and for our rate of return on the market that's just where we get our rental rate of capital or our marginal product of capital which is equal to our rental rate and since our uh you know rate of depreciation is equal to one right and our remember in our other model we would go have minus delta over here we're just bringing that over to the other side and now we have our rate of return on the market that's point number four we proceed to solve for two key variables in this model. That is the optimal BGP savings rate, which is denoted as S hat, and our labor supply per household member on the balanced cross path, which is denoted by L hat over here, which is our labor supply per household member. Just had to say that again. So to solve for our savings rate S hat, right? Recall that our intertemporal Euler equation is defined as the following. We're calling the fact that little c is equal to one minus s times y t over n t, right? Which is just, this is just a rewriting of consumption, right? Per household member, right? And our rate of return on the market, right? In this, in this context is alpha is equal to y t plus one all over k t plus one. And taking the logs of both sides of this equation, we can derive our saving rates s t. So, we just have some algebra here. So uh, taking logs on both sides seem pretty straightforward. Notice that um, when we take the natural log of this expectation, we just leave everything on the inside unchanged. That's the main point. Moving along, note that the variables at time t are known with certainty. So for example, if we have a variable x at time t, right? Uh, the expectation of it would just be x t, right? Because that knowledge is already known. So we can just pull that out of our expression, all the t's out of our expression and just treat them as just regular uh, logged variables. Uh, that's described in the second uh, line from the top that we have over here. Um, moving uh, the s values over to one side, right? And holding our expectation on the other side, we go and we get the following. Note that Technology A and capital do not enter the above relation that we have. This means that our savings rate, whether it be at time t or time t plus one, uh, is constant. So you have this constant savings rate value s hat. Um, some further algebra goes and shows that our savings rate or our log savings rate is equal to negative rho plus n plus ln alpha. Or if we're just looking at this constant savings rate itself, uh, S hat is equal to alpha times E raised to the power of negative rho plus N. So now let's solve for labor supply per household unit. Um, recall that our consumption equation relating uh, consumption leisure to a specific wage under uncertainty is defined as the following. Uh, we see that there's no sort of uncertainty, meaning that there's no sort of expectation or future variables as in there's their their consumption patterns today are not determined by the future and so too their work patterns are 
today are not determined by the future. Uh, if we were to take the logs of both sides and recalling the fact that our consumption per household could be rewritten as one minus S hat, right? Because we already noted that our savings rate is constant times Y T all over population N, right? This over here is just another way of writing consumption C. We have the following. Noting uh, that our that our wage rate, right, is written as one minus alpha times Y T all over uh, L, right, with our labor supply per household. Um, we have the following. So this right is just a rewriting of our wage uh, equation that we want to have on our second slide with where we had all the equations there uh, with some a little bit of further algebra right which I have illustrated on this slide we go and obtain that our labor supply again is just determined by these parameters here right alpha B and this constant saving rate s so labor supply in this context is going to be constant. So uh, this is a video on solving a specific case of the model where we so solve two key variables that would be our saving rate and our labor supply where, th where they are both constant over time. I'll see you in the next video where we go and we try to solve the general version of the model or at least find an approximate solution for it. I'll see you then.